اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسر لی امری و حل القتم اللسانی یفقہ قولی اللہم ارین الحق حقا و ارزقن اتباع و ارین الباطل باطلا و ارزقن اجتنابا ربی حبلی حکما و الحقنی بالصالحین ربی اعوذ بکا من حمازات الشیاطین و اعوذ بکا ربی این یحضرون There is a lot of uh, discussion going on online about um, uh, what's happening with the red heifer or the red cow uh, and how it is going to impact the demolition of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, destruction of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa. May Allah save us from such a disaster. Uh, but uh, I've seen um, most of it is just um, chatter and uh, just random information gathered uh, from here and there and most of the people are just jumping off uh, the high wave to 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 get into this into the spotlight uh, so uh, we thought we would rather um, catch the signal from the noise uh, to bring forward the actual facts on this topic so i would like to explain uh, two parts of the same problem the basic part is the philosophical part what is the concept of this red heifer uh, or the red cow so uh, there is going to be a two part one is the philosophical part where did this concept come from and what is the r- roots of uh, this concept and the second thing is uh the current scenario on the red heifer is there really a red heifer or red cow or is it really going to impact or cause the construction of uh, uh, destruction of uh, masjid al aqsa in, in coming days uh so let's uh, get straight to the first part uh, that is the philosophical part that where did this concept come from and mm, how it stands uh, in in the current uh, m- myths and the concepts of um, bani israel or Isra- israelites basically when uh, the people of moses the people of bani israel when they were enslaved by uh, the pharaoh and the king of egypt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam, Moses, uh, as, their, uh, as Allah's prophet and he, he then, Allah made him the savior for the Bani Israel who uh, took Bani Israel from the slavery into a free life out of Egypt. So right out of Egypt, when the people of Bani Israel were in an open land allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called moses musa alayhi salam to uh, to the mount tur so when bani israel right out of egypt when bani israel uh, were living in an open area allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called moses to mount sinai where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would talk to moses for 40 days and when Musa Moses was absent from his people there was a magician within Bani Israel uh, as we know in Quran as Samri uh, magician Samri so there was a magician um, within Bani Israel uh, as Uh, the Quran mentions the same magician as Samri and uh, the same magician is also known as a Samaritan or something. What he did, he, he, he assembled, I'm willingly not using the word, uh, word created because Allah is the only one who creates. So he assembled a cow out of a gold and other uh, metallic uh, ornaments and he convinced 
the people of Bani Israel to worship that cow. Right? Understand? To worship the same cow uh, that he assembled out of uh, the melted gold and other, other uh, precious uh, metals that they had. And probably they brought it from um, Egypt. And he convinced the people to worship that cow. When Moses came, from, came back from Mount Sinai, he was very furious and he even scolded uh, his, uh, his uh, elder brother Aaron or Harun as we know in uh, Islam. And the, the, the magician Samri and the people who obeyed Samri in worshipping the cow were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Some of them were killed and like so on. There was very extreme punishment that was given uh, to them. Right? And then Bani Israel, the rest of them, repented from this act. Right? So this is where the story starts. The cow coming into the lives of whom? Bani Israel into the lives of Bani Israel. This is the first occurrence because Bani Israel start from whom? From the grandson of Abraham, uh, whose name was uh, Jacob, right? Yaqub alayhi salam and his other name is Israel as well. So that's why they are called Bani Israel, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel. And he was the grandson of Ibrahim and the Jacob's son, Yusuf, Joseph, migrates to Egypt, as we know the Quranic story, and over there he is enslaved, and later on he is made the prime minister of Egypt, and he controls things, and he brings his rest of family to Egypt. And there they are, the rulers, among the ruling family, and later on, slowly, they are dropped back to the slaves after Joseph, Yusuf, Yusuf al -Islam. And then over time, they became a huge diaspora, a huge population of Egypt. And all of that population was enslaved within Egypt. And then after centuries or maybe more, Musa al -Islam appears. Musa al -Islam is born within Egypt. Bani Israel and from there Musa al-Islam they start from Yusuf al-Islam as the prime minister of Egypt and they end up being the slaves of the same Egypt oh, during all those times they have the history of slavery nothing phenomenal that we can mention so then Musa salam is born within them and Musa salam dri drives them out of slavery from Egypt into a spare land, into a free land, right? Over here, there is the first occurrence of a cow. And that cow is made out of gold and silver ornaments. And what color is going to be that cow then? most probably very bright yellow right very bright yellow when they're punished and they repent from that there starts the story of the cow within bani israel after some time something happens a person is killed within bani israel and it causes a dispute within Bani Israel and people start to fight off each other and they, 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 they draw their swords on each other. And one of them tells them that why are you fighting over something when you have Allah's apostle, Allah's prophet within you, that is Musa alayhi salam. So let's go to him and discuss the better matter with him and let him ask the God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would ask because he talks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah talks to Moses. So he would 
help us resolve the matter. Allah explains this matter in Quran and this is the second surah of Quran, second chapter of Quran and it is the longest chapter of Quran and very, very importantly, it is, you can consider the, f the first chapter in a sense that because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us that Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter is the opening chapter. It is the opening chapter. It is the starting. It is the door. Right from the door you encounter what? Surah Al-Baqarah. Baqarah means cow. Baqarah means cow. The, the longest chapter and the very first chapter after the, after the door is about the cow. And that cow is not about the cow that we slaughter. It is not something that, that Muslims have any ruling about. This is the mentioning of the same cow that we today, that we know today as the red heifer. That is that the Bani Israels are going to slaughter and eventually that is linked to the destruction of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa. So basically Allah has given the most important to this uh, importance to this red heifer within Quran. So let's get back to where we were. That the story started from the metallic cow made out of precious ornaments and they were worshipping and they repented. And then the second event right after or soon after occurs within the life of Moses that somebody is killed. And the matter comes to Moses, Musa alayhi salam. Now, Musa alayhi salam asked, Moses asks this matter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the story that is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And the same reason the Surah Al-Baqarah is named after uh, the cow. Because Musa alayhi salam asked about this person that this is killed. Uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this person and what Allah said. Let's get straight to Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to them that, O oh Moses, O oh Moses, tell your people to do what? Waizqala Musa li qawmihi inna allaha ya'murukum an tazbahu baqara. After this matter was taken to Moses, Musa alayhi salam talked to Allah and Allah told them the solution to this matter. And what was the solution? Musa said to his people, Antazbahu Bakara, O people, slaughter a cow. Slaughter a cow. Qalu atattakhiduna huzuwa. The people said, Are you making fun of us? Are you doing uh, like you, you are making like a, trying to do some, some mischief or something? Are you having fun with us? About we are talking to you about a matter of, per, of a person who was murdered and you are telling us to slaughter a cow. And the Musa said, Qala a'udhu billahi an akuna min al -jahileen. Musa said, I seek Allah's refuge that I become among the, uh, among the jahileen, among the bad people. Then they said, Qalu du'u lana rabbaka yubayyil lana mahiya. Instead of slaughtering the cow, they started making fun with Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam told them to slaughter the cow. Then after a few verses, Allah explains why and how. Allah said, فَقُلْ نَزْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Slaughter a cow and then take a part of its meat and touch the body of the murdered person. Allah would revive that person. He would come back to life. And then Allah will show you how a person, how Allah can bring a dead person to life. And Allah will show you his signs. This is what they were told. But they started making fun. And they started having fun. And instead of going ahead and slaughtering any cow they started questioning so they they to to avoid the matter and they said 
قول دولانا رب کا یو بئی لنا ماہیا او موزز آسک یور لارڈ ہاؤ شوڈ دا کاؤ لک لائک سو سو دے اسٹارٹیڈ کویسچننگ سو ٹو اوائڈ دا میٹر اینڈ دے فرسٹ آف آل دے سیڈ او موسا گو آسک اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ وٹ شوڈ اٹ بی لائک وٹ شوڈ دا کاؤ بی لائک دین موسا ریپلائڈ کالا ان یقول انہا بقرۃ لا فارد ولا بکر یو وڈ اسٹارٹ میکنگ فائنڈنگ دا کنیکشن ود ان ود وٹ ایور یو ہیو ہرڈ اباؤٹ دا ریڈ ہائفر اینڈ ود دس میٹر وٹ اٹ از اللہ سیڈ کالا ان یقول انہا بقرۃ لا فارد ولا بکر دا کھاؤ مسٹ ناٹ بی اولڈ نار ٹو یگ it should be uh, fairly uh, of a fair age uh, it should be not too young it should not be too old awanum bayna dalik it should be between that fafalu ma tu'marun then allah said go ahead now do whatever you are told take any cow that is neither neither too young nor too old just go ahead and take any cow and slaughter it and touch its meat with the body of the murdered person and it would come back to life and tell you who is the murderer because they were not uh, able to identify who was the uh, murderer qalu do lana rabbaka yubayyi lana they still didn't want to do it the bani israelis did still didn't want to do it they said oh musa moses go ask your lord yubayyi lana ma launuha ask your lord what color it should be what should be the color of the cow qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun safra moses said that allah has now told you that the cow's color must be safra that is yellow color what color safra yellow color or golden yellow color Safra is bright yellow that is that is like more towards the yellow of gold. Faqi'u lawnuha that the color of the cow must be like it should be bright and the surrun nazirin it should be very pleasing to eyes. Qalu dolana now they kept on sort of teasing their prophet just to avoid the matter or delay the matter uh, as much as they could you know qalu dulana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma hiya and they said oh, oh musa o oh moses go ask your lord that make it more clear for us uh, what it should be like innal baqara tashabaha alaina no in sort of a mischievous manner they said we can find so many such cows uh, so so ask your allah to make it further clear for us wa inna inshallah inshallah la muhtadun if you get further clarification from the god we hope that we would be able to figure out what kind of cow your god wants qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun la zalulun then allah God replied to them through Moses that the cow must not be la dalulun tusirul arz that the cow must not have been used to plow the earth in the fields wala tusqil harz that it should not have been used to fetch water musallamatun la shayba la shiyata fiha and the cow must be very sound and la shiyata there should be no no blemish no spots uh, on the cow qalul ana jita bil haq then they said okay now we understand what kind of cow you want then uh, according to the narrations in in islamic uh, um, uh, Uh, in, in in islamic narrations then they went and found the cow uh, with the uh, with the farmer and the farmer did not want to sell the cow uh, they they uh, he put a very high price for the same cow 
and then they bought the cow and they slaughtered it and uh, then they touched a piece of its meat with the murdered person the person came back to life and told who was the murderer and then he died again this is the story of the cow that bani israel went through and how it came to uh came in their culture in their religion now did you notice that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the color of the cow as safra the color of the cow must be golden yellow must be safra golden yellow and initially they were told to slaughter any cow any cow but they did not want to slaughter the cow why because they had developed a love for the cow when they had worshiped a cow made out of gold and other precious metals when samri a magician samri made that cow for them and they had developed some sort of love for the cows that's why they were they wanted to avoid this matter so they kept on asking the questions and when they kept on asking the questions allah subhanahu wa taala kept on making it difficult for them and eventually the color of the cow was told to be safra golden yellow that would match the cow they were worshiping a while ago so that they 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 fight off they kill their love for the cow and some sort of myth and some sort of false belief they had that they have developed for the cow must must be cleared must be like must vanish from their life that's why they were told to slaughter a cow initially but when they kept on asking questions allah subhanahu wa taala kept on making it more like the cow they were worshiping that's how it started that is a philosophical thing now in the jewish culture in the jewish narrations they think that this event happened multiple times first time at the time of moses when they had to bring a body back to life and later on a few other times islamic narrations do not talk about if it happened further times or not but quran does mention that it did happen at the time of musa it did happen at the time of musa alaihissalam and the purpose was not to bring that was just an effect the actual purpose that allah kept on putting the requirements the specification for the cow was so that they kill they vanish they fight off their love for the cow and allah kept on making the specifications very close to what they actually worship and they think it happened multiple times in history Quran does not talk about that but Quran does talk about this very clearly that the color of the cow could be any if they did not uh, try to avoid the matter number 1 number 2 Quran tells that the color of the cow must be golden yellow not red and Allah is not talking about something that happened to muslims allah is telling the exact story that allah had ordered to bani israel the same bani israel who are trying to find and slaughter a cow and other features they are comparing we would talk about uh, uh, coming forth are very close to what allah had told that the cow must not have plowed any field it not it must not have been used to uh, fetch water Uh, there should be no spots on its body uh, and uh, all the color of the cow should be uniform and it should not be too young and it should not be too old all these things that the bani israelis are trying to find are very close to 
what Allah says in Quran, but there is very basic difference they want to, uh, they, they are uh, with, with what, is, what they are doing and what they were told to do. And that is the color of the cow. Right. Now, let's go to uh, the second part, what they are trying to do right now and what are their concepts. Now, we are, up till now, we were talking from the Islamic perspective, from what Quran told. And let's talk about from their perspective now. Right. Number one, they think it has been done a few times, maybe nine times or so, and it has to be done for the tenth time. And they think when they would slaughter the cow for the tenth time, their, their savior would come to earth and make them the rulers or the kings of the world. And for that matter, they have to construct a place, a palace or castle for that savior. If it would get a bit longer, but this story has further details that who was the actual savior that they were promised and who actually is the savior they are waiting for right now. We can talk about this in the next episode, inshallah. But in this episode, uh, we can talk about the basic concept. They think that the cow has to be slaughtered for the 10th time as well. The, the connection with the cow and the castle is that they think that when the cow is slaughtered and it is touched with the body of a person, that person becomes pure. It becomes very pure and the person becomes worthy of doing, uh, of achieving God's requirements from a person. So that's why what they want to do is they want to slaughter a cow and then touch its meat to a few people they have like um, uh, they have like um, added a few things to their uh, beliefs. Probably they would uh, slaughter the cow, burn the meat, and touch the ashes to the body. Doesn't matter. Basically, they want to slaughter the cow and t do the same ritual that Musa salam did. And once that would be achieved, they would be their rabbis or spiritual leaders who would be able to, to worship in the castle. Worship in the place of their savior, right? So this is in their eyes the requirement, the prerequisite for the castle. And what is the castle of their God? That is, again, very, uh, Allah has explained the castle and their savior and their kingdom they want to achieve you know, in very detail uh, in Quran as well. Uh, we would cover that in the next part as uh, well. But right now, to summarize, basically, there was King Solomon that we know as Prophet Suleiman salam. He had his, his palace in Palestine. And he ruled not only Bani Israel, but the rest of the world as well from that, that palace. And that is uh, the temple of Solomon, which was later when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath fell upon Bani Israel. And they were, uh, they were made to surrender to other nations, their castle or, or uh, the temple of the uh, Solomon was destroyed as well. So they basically they want to slaughter the cow, touch the meat to a few people to purify them and then those people would be able to worship in the temple. And they, this is being called the third temple because the temple was first built uh, by Solomon. Later on it was built once more and this is the third time they want to build. And they think 
that the temple was exactly at the place where Masjid al-Aqsa is today. And for that temple to be built, they want to destruct Masjid al-Aqsa and construct the temple in place of Masjid al-Aqsa. So, what they have done is according to few underground sources, not the confirmed sources, they have been doing uh, tunneling or they have been digging underneath Masjid al-Aqsa and the, the, there is a rumor and expectation is that they have done a lot of work underneath Masjid al-Aqsa or most probably they have built parts of the temple underneath Masjid al-Aqsa and they can destruct Masjid al-Aqsa any time. But before that they want to have the people who are pure enough to handle the third temple, the castle of their God, right? Who their God is, most of them do have their uh, 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 our understanding, but uh, we would come to uh, that in detail uh, in the next one. So, right now, what is the situation? You understand, uh, by now you understand the concept, where did the philosophy came, number one. Number two, why did the God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, require them uh, to do this ritual? And we have just verified this ritual from Quran, yet, yes, this was sent by Allah, this ritual. Uh, the the third one is what is the reason and how they want to do it right now. Number four, the current status. The current status, before we talk about the current status of the, of, of the, of the cow that they want to slaughter, um, there is very basic thing that they have changed. Since there is no such thing as a golden cow in the world anymore, there does not exist the rare cow. The yellow, golden yellow cow does not exist in the world anymore. You cannot find it in anywhere in the world. So when you compare Quran's words with their current beliefs, you would realize that they have changed the color from bright yellow to brownish red. And now, there's a breed of cows called heifers. So they want to find a heifer, the specific brownish red colored cow, and apply all those features on that cow and do it their own way which would obviously be against the actual ritual they were told. And they were told to do this ritual at the time of Moses and for the good purpose. And now they are using the same ritual to fight off the same God. And they want to kill the followers of the same God to build their temple. So they have changed a very basic thing because there is no such thing as golden yellow, a bright golden yellow cow in the world. So they have changed it, right? So the current status with the changed methodol, changed specifications is that uh, a few years ago, about three years ago, they found four red heifers in Texas, United States. and. All uh, four of them were flown from Texas to Israel. And now for the past three years, they are being looked after and they are being uh, handled within Israel. One of them has been disqualified. And there are three cows left, three red heifers left who meet the requirement, according to them. They're not yellow, they're not bright yellow, they're not golden yellow. They are red, the, the, the changed specification they have made for themselves. And as of today, they, they are three years of age. 
three years of age. So basically, the same requirement as the Quran mentions. They are not too young and they are not too old. They are of fair age. They can be three years of age, four years of age, but not too old. So they meet the requirement. There, is, there are no spots on their body, not a single other colored hair on their body. All of the body hairs are red, brownish red. And three of them meet the requirement. So if they delay the slaughtering of these red hyphers, those cows might develop other colored hairs over time. It does happen with the, you know, with the animals. So they cannot delay too much, but they may delay it until next year. But delaying it too much would, would, would create two problems. Number one, they would become too old and not have the require, meet the requirements anymore. Or they would develop other colored hairs. They would develop spots that that's quite possible so they cannot delay too much they can they have to do it this year or the next year max so the rumors the rumor is they might slaughter the cow next this month basically in in april and the the common belief among the people is that once they have slaughtered the cows Masjid al-Aqsa would be destructed. This is somewhat true and somewhat false. Masjid al-Aqsa would not be immediately destructed after the slaughter of these red hyphers because this is a prerequisite, not the event of uh, construction of, uh, of the third temple. So they would, after, the, after slaughtering these cows and and then they're purifying a few people uh, with the meat of these uh, cow, one cow or more. Uh, they would they would fulfill one more requirement that we, they have developed for uh, the construction of the third temple. So they would be even closer to the destruction of Masjid al-Aqsa. And it is true that they would one day or later soon or later they would destruct masjid al-aqsa to construct the third temple and when they construct the third temple they would have cleared their path of uh of of their so-called savior that would come in the next one inshallah we would explain the concept that where did the concept of this savior come into bani israel again from quran and what was the actual history and how they have changed it to what it is today and how it compares to Islamic, Islamic beliefs and how it comes in direct conflict with the Muslims and Islam, inshallah. So I've tried to clarify the whole concept in different steps, uh, but if you still don't understand uh, anything uh, or I've missed something, you can ask. When... Uh for the very first time, Allah asked them to sacrifice a cow. Uh, did they sacrifice a right colored cow for the very first time? Yeah, for the very first time, they did. Uh, they did slaughter the correct uh, cow uh, because Allah had developed the situation. A very rare cow was present somewhere on earth at that time. That's why Allah was taking them to very specific requirements. But later on, that was a very rare event, just like a miracle. It cannot happen every time. So they know that the miracle, they know they are not doing the right thing. So they have developed the specifications for their own selves. They have changed the specification to, uh, to meet what they can do right now the, because the miracles are not happening any, for them anymore. For the Muslims, inshallah, they would happen. Pani ki break karke Urdu mein kar rete hain. Pani ki break karne.